fall my butt out here. Folks, Mandy Sia here with another educational, informational, and hopefully entertaining video on the shooting sports. Just trying to get you guys out there into the field to do some shooting. Try it out. This time, we're gonna put our money where our mouth is. Where's that put our mouth where our money is? Never mind. Continuing our accurate revolver series. Ah. This time, we've got our 1858 Pieta Remington clone. That's right, it's the top strap clone. Oh, it's beautiful. Aftermarket grips, people, fitted by me. You saw in our video how we reamed out the black powder percussion cylinder. That's right, and if you forgot what we did, I don't know what to tell you. I can't watch the videos for you. You're gonna have to go back and check it out. What are you, like Jerry Nadler or something? You got the bad memory falling asleep at the Senate at the hearing? <laughs> Bunch of commie leftist scumbags. Speaking of commies, we're coming to you live from the formerly once great communist state of California. Where the fruits, nuts, and flakes run wild. But uh, that's only in the north and the southern part. Actually, the Bay Area and the LA um, Hollywood idiots. Uh, the rest of the state is mostly ag, and there are a lot of big, hardcore Second Amendment advocates out there. To you guys who like to bust on Californians, think about this, Kimosabi. 38 million people in this state, approximately 12 to 17 million gun owners. There's more gun owners in California than there are people in mostly your other states. Hmm, funny. We've got a pretty good size gun club. That's what we'll call it. It's a gun club. We've got a really good size gun club out here. But I digress. That's getting off the topic at hand. Today, we're gonna test out the 1858 and the reaming we did on the cylinder. Remember, we opened the cylinder up. This is a 44. See, it says over here, black powder only, 44. Gun will blow up if you use it for anything but black powder. <laughs> uh, they call it a 44, but it's really a 43. It's a .434. But I guess 44 sounds a lot more sexy than a 43 caliber. I don't know. I don't make the rules. I just play the game. We ream these out to .452. It gets even more confusing, doesn't it? We ream these out to .452 because they don't make a reamer in .435. And then we slugged our bore and we came up with the measurements that showed that the hole that this goes into is bigger than the hole in the bore. When you put these in here and you smash these balls down into here, what happens is they get small. If they're smaller than the bore, you're gonna have crap accuracy. We've tried to describe this to you guys on many occasions. Hopefully you've followed and if not, oh, well, what can I do? Can't, can't do it for you. You wanna go out and have crappy accuracy, then you do it. And it's funny because I've had guys say, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, if your groups look more like a shot pattern than grouping, I think it's broke. So you're gonna have to fix it. Or you just shoot groups. I like these guys when you go to the range, and I do go to the range, by the way. They're the range Nazis, and they're out there in there, and they shoot a group, and then they gotta wait, you know, 45 minutes so the range will go cold, so they can go out and check, and then they spend like two days out there. <laughs> they got camping out, they're camped out there, they got their, their food and everything. Nah, I'm just exaggerating. These guys are telling us that what we're doing is gonna destroy our revolver. If it destroys a revolver, it's my revolver. What do you want me to do? Are you a totalitarian? Preaching? Statist? No! Freedom is dangerous. I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. Sound familiar? We have a bevy. Oh, you guys are gonna love this today. So this is the 1858 Remington clone Pieta edition. Stainless. And we're gonna be testing it out with Pirate X. Now, 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 no Pirate X hate on this channel. It all goes boom and we all love it. Along with everybody's favorite, Go X. Holy Black, Triple F. Triple F versus Pirate X. Dun, dun, dun. We're gonna see which one gets a better grouping. I have high hopes for this. And if not, you guys will never see this video. If it doesn't turn out the way I think it is, oh well. And as we mentioned before, shooting black powder, it's not for the timid, it's not for the weak stomach. It's dirty, it's nasty, it's filthy, it's disgusting and wet and just black and, wait a minute, that's like we said before. It sounds like a Stormy Daniels video. We were gonna set this up to chrono, but I think that's just too many variables. What we are gonna do is shoot 
at our target downrange. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. I love doing stuff like this, and I hope you guys do too. Of course, the dismal views on our channel, a couple hundred here, a couple hundred there, and I know that Google is messing with the analytics because Google is an authoritarian, anti-American, anti-free speech, anti-freedom, commie-loving corporation. What do you want? Before we get on with the shooting, take a look at it. I know a lot of guys complain about how fast I go, but oh, she's beautiful. Beautiful. Remember, oh, and uh, no, I'm not gonna do no Yoda impressions. Come on, all you Star Wars geeks out there. Now remember, oh, uh, no offense to the Star Wars fans, 1858 has the cylinder notches in between the cylinder where you can lay your hammer down so you can truly, see that? So you can truly carry this gun with six in the field and capped. So you don't gotta worry about shooting your leg off or cutting off Mr. Femoral Artery or Mr. Family Jewels, because I know everybody needs those, unless you got a bunch of kids, but I digress. On with the testing. Suffice it to say, we are not going to go into a whole lot of detail on our loading. We're gonna assume you know how to load. Uh, if you don't, go back and watch one of our videos. We show you how to load. Uh, so we put our 30 grains of powder, and we've got our powder measure here, our, our powder thrower here, 30 grains. I'm gonna put an over powder wad on these just because. Helps to lube the bore. And these we made ourselves with a punch from Harbor Freight. And then we just soaked them. This is, these are felt by the way, 100% felt. And we soaked them in our favorite Crisco, Vaseline, and lamb's tallow mixture. Now uh, to load these guys up, I like to make sure that I'm doing all the same. So sprue cut, there's a cut, either all up, or all down, right? And I almost messed up because I'm talking. So the sprues are gonna have to all go the same way. That way you have the same accuracy. They see very, very nice. Oh yes, very, very nice. Just by reaming out the cylinder, we did some, ooh, they see very easily. Man, you see a like. And that's all that matters because it's my channel. And remember, we reamed these out. We didn't go all the way down. We only went to about here. That's about as far as the ball is gonna go because we're not gonna be swaging them down past there. Why waste the time? Ah, uh, we are loaded for bear. Look at my capper. I got a box full of junk and I don't even know where half my junk is. I'm about to blame one of the kids. Uh, you guys already know how this works. We're gonna fast forward to the bench. One more thing that I really like to do is I like to use a wooden dowel and help seat my caps just to make sure Everything is kosher. <laughs> Nothing like that smoke. And uh, of course you're gonna get caps that'll jam up in the works a little bit. Sometimes uh, that happens. There's a fix to that, but I don't really uh, think it's worth doing. I've done it before and it works eh, all right, but uh, it's not really worth it. It's black powder. It's cap and ball. What do you expect? That's why we carry Glocks now, people. Duh. Oh yeah, and there's nothing like being able to holster on the range. All right, we loaded up. Same procedure as last time using Pyrodex now. Let's see what happens. I, uh, this is about 35 grains of Pyrodex. Ooh. Oh wow, that, look, that looks promising. All right, so here's our Go-X, and that is very nice, very tight. But then again, look at the Pyrodex. Woo, the Pyrodex is nice too. It's hard to tell which one this gun likes the best. I'm gonna have to say it likes both. I'll load up both, I really don't care. But look at the accuracy on that. Oh man, we're all touching. And uh, over here we got one little fire. That might have been me. Like I said, I don't shoot this all the time. Maybe once or twice a year. So. I think the work we did kind of worked. 
right? I gotta tell you, this Goax load, and look at the Pyrodex load group. They're shooting better than some centerfire pistols I've got. Go figure. Nothing beats black powder, people, for the fun, the atmosphere, and the smell. Oh, oh, pointing a gun at you. Oh. Oh, and I like using a lubed felt wad over the powder just so it prevents chain fire. You know, chain fire is when you accidentally bridge a charge against one or more chambers and you'll get two balls coming out at once. That's not good for safety. Something else you guys want to think about when you're loading cap and ball, and this applies to center fire rifles also, you can tell if you're getting a good bore to bullet seal by the star pattern it's produced on your muzzle. Look at that. Let's see if we can get that. Oh yeah, you see that? That star pattern indicates you have excellent bore to bullet lands in grooves and the inside contact and the little bit of groove and a little bit of lube that we're using is actually doing a job see that oh yeah that's a great indicator uh, and uh, you guys who cast bullets and size them too that's what you want to do you always want to size your bullets to the throat of your revolver as long as the throat is larger than your bore Whew, we're dirty as we should be after shooting, I don't know, six, seven, eight cylinderfuls. Uh, and the bore, I don't know if you can see that. Hmm, no, you probably can't. The light isn't the greatest. Oh yeah, where before we would have streaks of leading after we cut the forcing cone. And you guys remember we cut the forcing cone. Now you can't really see it because it's all dirty, but it's beautiful. This is like, this is a no-brainer for you cap and ball guys. I thought the only way you guys would get a good understanding of the results we were going to have was to film it. So here I took a little cheesy bore, bore scope, went down through just to film what had happened. And we started going down the muzzle side and you can see the lands and grooves are clean. No streaks or smears of lead whatsoever. Now, if you take a look at this a little bit closely, you'll see a little spot of rust right there. But besides that, that's where we cut our forcing cone. And so you can see that cutting the forcing cone and opening the throats on your cylinder, be it percussion or center fire, has huge effect on accuracy and cleanliness in your revolvers. This is something anybody can do.
And here's the proof. Like they say, proof is in a pudding. Well, so what do you think? Do you think it was worth it? I do. That was awesome. We opened up these holes bigger than Stormy Daniels holes. <laughs> but seriously, you see what you do with a little bit of science. These are production guns, people. And production doesn't always equate the quality. It's just good enough. Good enough to get the ball down range and hopefully nobody questions it. But we showed you how to fix it. You can do this in center fire, rim fire, and like we just did today, percussion, cap and ball. I love cap and ball. It is whew, the funnest, if not the dirtiest, the messiest, the longest, the most time consuming. But hey, it's like we said before, if you can't have fun on the range and if you get a rush, this sport isn't for you. Get the gospel of the gun out, check out the links. We got a lot of stuff on there, people. Show you how to accurize your revolvers. I guess the sun decided to come out. Ooh, bees. Ah. Have fun, go shooting. Try these things out. Don't be afraid. It's only a gun. You just have to buy another part. <laughs> Till next time. <laughs>